Welcome to Mike Morrison Ministries Church at the Barn, Tuesday night Bible study. Would you open your Bibles, please, to Hebrews chapter 13 tonight? Hebrews chapter 13, and I want to read verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for revelation on that assignment you've given us. This isn't a suggestion but we're, we've been filled with the Holy Spirit of God who is our helper, and we lean on that help and ask you, Lord, to show us more, more depth, a deeper awareness of how to do this, when to do this, and how often to do it, and, uh, and what happens when we follow your directions on praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise is... Uh, um, one of those words that in Hebrew and Greek and English, it's actually pretty close to the same definition, no matter what you're looking in a concordance or dictionary. In the dictionary, it said that praise is uh, expressing recognition of perfection. And praise expressing recognition of perfection you realize some you realize somebody or something is worthy of uh, praise because they've made it to a level that uh, isn't often attained well jesus made it to a level <laughs> hallelujah of perfection that uh, is absolutely perfect Nobody's ever done that before or since. Jesus was perfect. He is perfect, and he will always be perfect. And he is our Lord. And because of the blood covenant that God's made with man in the New Testament, the new blood covenant, we're able to be treated by the Heavenly Father like we've attained that perfection, even though we didn't. But Jesus did, and he traded us his perfection for our perfection. He traded us his inadequacy, which is zero, for our inadequacies, which could be many. But we don't count ours anymore because he took ours. And he gave us his. And praise God is the right that is the right thing to say when you when you stir yourself up on that. You have to remind yourself of that, and I mean remind yourself of that often throughout the course of an ordinary day, because this world is designed to tell you and remind you of just exactly the opposite, continually beating on a believer all day, every day. This isn't any good, this isn't any good, this isn't any, you're no good, they're no good, nothing's any good, and just be just getting bombarded with how down everything has become. And that is not what God told us to do. It is fact, it's just exactly the opposite of what he told us to do, so you know where it's coming from. If there's a pressure in your life to be focused on what's going wrong, instead of speaking to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and praising God, we focus on the mountain and we start praising the mountain, then that is the opposite of what God told us to do. And the problem, the, the reason that I believe God wants this addressed is because it is so prevalent in the body of Christ right now. This is a simple, fundamental, basic command of our commander-in-chief. This is not optional. Praise God 
continually is what the Bible said. Never stop. So if you're praising anything that's going wrong, proclaiming, get extolling, um, th there's some other words here, uh, if I find them, I wrote them down, magnifying, extolling, glorifying, uh, giving an account of imperfections, you're doing just exactly the opposite of what God said to do. Well, let me tell you what I heard, and then you start down the trail of, of every wrong thing that happened in this situation, and who's at fault, and who's to blame, and what could have happened, and maybe should have happened, and maybe didn't happen, maybe. Uh, there's a real trap for, for believers that the world's caught up in, but they have to be caught up in it. They don't know any better, and they don't have anything on the inside of them checking them. But we do unless we've calloused it. And that is when there's something going wrong to uh, get caught up in that blame game and uh, start looking for, what, looking for what's wrong and who did it and, and do something about it. Let me tell you what the Bible says for the New Testament believer to be doing about things like that is to be to speak to it, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Don't doubt in your heart, believe what you say, it'll come to pass. And then start praising God. Instead of, instead of focusing on and praising what's going wrong, you praise God. And that's what we're going to look at tonight because I believe that the word on this subject is uh, thorough. It is all over the Bible. If there's something in the Bible that you see everywhere you look, it's, and it's good, it should be something we're doing continually all of the time. And you cannot praise God and praise what the devil's doing at the same time. You can't extol what's going wrong, focus on what's going wrong, and extol God and how good he is at the same time. You can't do that. So why do we try? Because it's habitual behavior. We've been trained. How many of you were, were trained in uh, school to watch the news? See, that's, that all started uh, about, <clears throat> it's, it, that wasn't going on when I was in grade school, but it's, it started along about middle school, somewhere in there. And, and when it started, that would have been uh, the 60s. And when they started doing that, they started doing it for kindergarten even. So er everybody was looking at news. And it's, it's got more, every year, it's more and more important. And we're trained this way. You're not a good American if you don't focus on the news every day. Well, in the first place, what they're telling you to focus on is not the news. It's bad news, and it's not necessarily even true. And, and, and what we're finding out more and more every day, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is absolute fact, and it's coming out, and thank God for it. We have several news networks that are lying on purpose all day, every day. They're a propaganda machine, and they're bringing, they're, they, they can twist everything that's happened in the way they say it, how, what they say, what they don't say, and how they present it until they ban the thinking of the population over to the way they want the population to think. It's propaganda. It's something that uh, Adolf Hitler and, uh, and his sidekick, Goering, developed to a f art form, but I believe the media in the United States of America has taken it past anything those two ever cooked up. And, it, and they've presented it as, it, they've presented it as something a good American is just supposed to be doing. I'm telling you what, a good covenant Christian should not be caught up in this world's uh, brainwashing ever. Not ever. Not for 10 seconds should you get caught up. Now, to hear it is one thing to feed on it until you're full of it and it's coming out of your own mouth because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
And so what you're looking at and listening to is how it gets abundant in your heart. It multiplies in that, especially a reborn spirit. And when it gets in there and the subjects come up, what's in there and, and, and grown in there is going to come out of your mouth. You can't stop what went in there and grew up from coming out of your mouth. What you can do is stop what you're listening to and looking at. And instead of, look, pr instead of listening to praise of evil, you focus on praise of somebody worthy of praise, and then you praise him, and you extol him, and you extol his virtues, and you thank him for what he's doing in the earth. And those news networks won't tell you what he's doing in the earth. They're hiding that from everybody. God's doing wonderful, glorious things all day, every day, all over the world. And even if you don't know exactly what they are because nobody's reporting it, you know God well enough to know he's doing that. So you could praise him and thank him for what he's doing because you know he's not doing anything wrong. He's perfect. And he's doing something continually all the time, everywhere at once. The most evil person in this earth draws a breath because almighty God gave him the air and the lungs to do it with and he's keeping him going <laughs> God should be praised Amen. by his people whether, any, whether anybody that doesn't belong to God knows it or not his people ought to know this and because we know it we ought to, we ought to hear coming out of our mouth just how good he is. And when somebody brings up how bad the devil is, it should trigger in us how good God is. It should not trigger in us to what we've heard also about the devil so that we're extolling the devil along with somebody else extolling the devil. And pretty quick, the Christian people anointed by God are extolling the devil. You're, you're building the devil up and praising the devil. That's not our job. He's a outlaw, a killer, the thief. He's not here to do anything right or anything good, and he does not worthy of praise. He is not worthy of us giving him any credit for anything. On the other hand, God is. So I would like to be I would like to look tonight, please, uh, at uh, Psalm 150, the last Psalm in the Bible. I'll give you an example. Um, give myself an example and a reminder. Um, and because it triggered something in me, um, it occurred to me, this is a good subject to teach. I don't know that God told me to teach this tonight. I know he told me to look at it. And when I got to looking at it, it fired me up so much, I thought, I'm just going to teach on this. Oh, Psalm 150, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of a trumpet. Praise him with the psalm tree and a harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There are, there are six verses and 13 times we're told to praise the Lord. This must be important. 13 times in six verses. You can't find very many things in the Bible that uh, where a command is given by God so often and so repetitive. Why would that be? Because it is so vitally important. It's not a suggestion. This is not something to do because you don't have anything else to do. This is something to do because when you believe in your heart and say with your mouth, I extol the Lord God Almighty, you're triggering everything that God wants triggered. You're believing in your heart and saying with your mouth that your Lord is worthy of praise. 
and you're praising him, whether anybody else is or not. What, what will happen to the body of Christ when we start following these directions? You'll hear, you'll hear somebody uh, cuss, and you'll hear a, a believer say, praise the Lord. You'll hear some foul, filthy thing come out of some jackass's mouth, and you'll hear a believer say, praise the Lord God Almighty. When you put the praise of the Lord God Almighty up against praise of evil or evil speaking, you put, you put perfection of God speaking up against evil speaking. There might be a tussle, but I'm telling you what, the devil behind the filth cannot stand up to the almighty God behind the glory. And the praise will bring out the glory of God. And this is why this world system has told the silent majority to shut up. And has told the silent majority, you get on the news. You watch the news. You fill yourself up with every bit of slop we can put out there. And, and as you're listening to all of that, instead of praising the Lord, you're going to get full of stuff the devil's doing. Then you'll be praising him instead of praising the Lord. The, the enemy of God is out to shut the church up where praise is concerned and have them praising the devil instead. And the sad thing, Truth is, it's been working up to this point. But it's not going to work anymore because God's going to shine a light on this and the people are going to go, Aha! I see the light! Like Hank Williams. <laughs> I saw the light. I, wow! How many of you ever had one of them aha moments. Wow! I remember when God got through to me on, on uh, tithing. It was like a light went off. I had, I'd heard about tithing since I was a little kid. I grew up in a church that they didn't preach very much, but they preached tithing. Get born again every Sunday and tithe. <laughs> so, but I never, it, there's a difference between hearing something and having a revelation of it go off in your heart. When it goes off in your heart, it wakes up your mind and you go, wow, I see it. I can see. Hallelujah. Well, it's time for the body of Christ to look at praise until we see it. So let's look at another one here. Uh, um, uh, I want to I look at Matthew chapter 6 because yeah and so it's 147 all 147 all 148 and all 149 it's all about it's all about praise so you you can start uh reading the psalms um in let's see 145 um Start with Psalm 145 and read right through 150, and it's all, that's a lot of, a lot on praise. Praise is not a small subject in the Bible. It's everywhere. It's a big, it's a huge, it's huge. But I'll, uh, right now, I'd like to, uh, uh, well, let's, let's look at Matthew 6, verse uh, The, in verse 25, you see uh, that Jesus said, take no thought. And in verse, uh, as, you, as you read down through here, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, it's take no thought, take no thought, take no thought, take no thought. And then you get to verse 31, and it tells you how you take a thought because it says, therefore, take no thought, saying now this is a this is a key to praise, and it's it's a roundabout way of getting to it. But this thoughts are in our head all the time. You can't stop that. If you're alive on the earth, there are thoughts coming in your head all the time, and they're not coming from you. You're not the hot rod the devil's telling you you are. 
You are not omniscient. You're not, om, you're not omni anything that God is, but, but you, you don't come up with original thoughts. They're coming from somewhere. Then, and thank God you can get your thoughts from Almighty God because you're born again. Thank God the lost man can get thoughts from Almighty God because angels have access to a lost man's uh, thought process. And angels, angels put ideas in people's heads. They have access to the mind. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, wicked spirits in heavenly places that all work for the devil have access to your mind. The world we already talked about, the, the newspaper, uh, the news media, everything connected with the information coming out of this world system, but also entertainment, the um, Hollywood, the movies, the books, the magazines, everything has access to your mind. Most of it is not scriptural. <laughs> and if it's not scriptural, um, it's, it's, it's not even tr probably not even true. And even some of the stuff in scripture is not something you want to emulate. You know, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that God recorded for us to see how people got messed up. Well, don't copy them. <laughs> well, the Bible says... Don't copy what the Bible said some fool said, like one of Job's friends. They got in trouble for what they said. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. All that isn't even in the Bible, but, but that was Job's friends. And they weren't right when they said it. So why do we quote that stuff at a funeral? It's not right. It's not right. What is right? Find out what God said in the Bible, and that is why you praise him. You repeat what he said, particularly when you hear the contrary going on. There's not a better time to praise the Lord than when somebody else is praising the devil. That's not, you could just, you, you know, you just, you, you can even be nice about it. But uh, you, what you can't do is compromise truth with lies that's the difference i believe between a patriot and a politician professional politicians compromise because if they'll compromise here with this guy then next time he'll compromise with them they let him get something done he'll let them get something done and they're a compromise looking for a place to happen a patriot will not compromise right and wrong he won't do it. Right's right. Wrong's wrong. And there will be no compromise. I'm not budging off a of right. And uh, <clears throat> so moral morality for a believer, you know, when a moral issue comes up, there's no compromise with people that are immoral. You can't say, well, you know, it's okay for you to be like It's not okay for them to be like that. Well, they have a right as American to, to, uh, to be right, to, to be wrong. They have a right as American as long as it's not breaking the law, but we don't have to let them do something wrong without telling them that's wrong and telling them why it's wrong. It's wrong because God said it's wrong. It's okay to do that. The world said it's not, but the world's wrong. The word's right. We are not the silent majority, not any longer. And we are, not pray, we are not praising the devil one more minute, giving him credit for anything. There's one thing I heard a, a preacher give him credit for one time when I first got into this subject of faith. It was uh, Kenneth Hagin, Sr. He said... They said that to Kenneth Hagin, you never say anything bad about anybody. You find something good to say about everybody. They said, I'll bet you can find something good to say about the devil. And Kenneth Hagin said, well, he is a persistent cuss. <laughs> See, 
if you can find something that's good to say about the devil, I guess you can find something good to say about him. It's good is where believers should be focused. So what, what would the enemy of God do? Focus us, focus on us on bad and let us lead us to believe that that's a good, it's good to know everything that's going wrong. Well, why? How can it be good to know what's going wrong? How does that work? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think about everything going wrong, you're going to have going wrong in your heart. How's that going to be good? It's so good in that. Or you have to be informed. Well, it would be better to be informed by the Holy Spirit of God than by that tube or the device. You know where the Spirit of God, you know his voice. It's not up here in your head. It's in your heart. Truth rings a green light for you. And anything that's not true is a red light. <clears throat> it's... <laughs> If, you've, if you're sensitive to it and you spend more time in the Word listening to God than you do on the device listening to the world, then that red light, green light thing in your spirit just gets louder and louder and louder until when you hear some lie or lie, it's like you, you just, you know, every, you know every time he says something that's not true, you know it. Not here, it's right here in your heart. And, and after you listen to him about five minutes, there's not a thing this guy's saying. I can't, I can't. Why would I listen to this? There ain't a word coming out of his mouth I can believe. Who's telling you that? That in your knower, you know. That's a lie. But see, we get desensitized to it. If you listen to it all the time, you can't recognize it anymore. The Bible talks about having your conscience seared. Because why? You, you listen to something that the Spirit of God's giving you a red light on until you can't hear that red light anymore because a callus builds up on it. You don't, you're not quickened. That word quicken in the Bible is the same word where you quick a fingernail. How many of you know that hurts? Pretty good. You, you, you trim a horse too short and in in you quick them. The word, the word for that is quicken, quicken, quick the f horse's hoof. And you just trim down there into that bloodline. And this, you know, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300 pound horse st stepping down on that hoof, they got too short and quick. It'll put them right down. Sherry and I had a heel horse, and the wrong horse shirt got to him one day. And the next morning, he was flying out in the pasture with his feet up in the air. <laughs> He's so heavy. He weighed, <clears throat> he weighed a lot. He, he was big, and then he was overweight anyway. And he was just laying out there waiting for his feet to grow out so he could stand up without hurt. And I said, <clears throat> we had some, had a, Another guy come out and nail some shoes on him, and that got him some relief. But it, the point is, we are to be quick. We, we should be, that word quick, we should be quickened as believers. The Spirit of God, when he whispers, it should be like an alarm. on. It should be like a bugle call inside of us. His slightest is slightest, lowest voice should be like a bugle because we're quickened. We're quickened to hear him. And while the world is screaming, we're, we haven't desensitized ourselves, and, and we're quick in, in our spirit. And then we can watch some junk on, on the television. And instead of, instead of having it fill us up, we can refute it. We can come against it. 
we won't want any part of it, but we understand we have the authority to turn it around. And right there, while it's coming at you, you just you just doing the God job of taking the power out of it. Everything they say, you're taking them down, taking them down. It, the, a poor blind man, one poor man can deliver a city. It says in Ecclesiastes, one believer in covenant with God that's got the truth and's quickened to it can pray and stop a bunch of garbage coming over the air. I know, uh, I heard the Holy Spirit clear as a bell one time. I, I had, uh, I sang a song at a funeral <clears throat> and the preacher got up and refuted my song. The song was about how to get born again. And uh, it was in a denomination where the new birth wasn't something they were all in on. And uh, <clears throat> I was ready to do anything God would let me do to twist that right back around where it belonged. I mean, I was going to line that deal out. And God said, no, you're not. I, yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, why not? Inside, you know, I didn't say anything out loud, but inside, why not? He said, because the song was anointed. You sang the word of God. Everything she's saying isn't. There's no anointing on it. So the world can blab and blab and blab and blab and blab and blab and blab. It takes a long time with the word that's not anointed to uh, callous people up and brainwash them and bring them over into the worldly way of thinking. It can be done, and it has been done, but it doesn't take God. With the anointing power of God and the quickening of the Holy Spirit of God, it doesn't take him that amount of time to fix something and make it right. Any believer that will repent, just say, Father, I plead the blood over the... I, I need this. I need to... When I hear that news report, I, I want to be quickened. I want to be... I want to hear your voice. I want to be quick to pick up on a lie, even if it's my favorite newscaster. If he's lying, I want to know. <laughs> if, it, if, it's, if it's coming off that wire and that wire's not true, it's an honest... It can be an honest believer reading that wire, but if that wire's not true, I want to know it. I want to know. Thank you. Thank you for quick, the quickening. Hallelujah. So, take no thought. Don't take them. How do you take a thought? You hear something, that, and, you, and you, you're quickened in your heart. Mm, that's not. So, how, do you, how, do you, how would you how would you not take it? That's not my thought. That's, that's not true. You say out loud. Your mind has to shut up to hear what your mouth's saying. That's not my thought. I don't agree with that. That's anti-Bible. That means it's anti-Christ, and that means it's anti-me. I'm not having anything to do with that lie in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's just a technicality. No, it's the truth, and it'll make you free. It's <clears throat> any any time you hear, well, that's not necessary, and it's Bible, that's from hell. If God said to do it, it's necessary, or he wouldn't have said to do it. Praise is necessary. Praising him continually is necessary. You know, it sounds a little, I don't know, odd, even when a preacher says, praise the Lord all the time. I'm trying to think of this preacher's name. He's, he's, I'd give him credit if I could remember his name. I can see him. He's a big black man. I'm thinking he ministers out of Detroit, and he ran for public office some. Keith Butler, that's him. That's him. I never heard a preacher say, praise the Lord, as often as Keith Butler does. Praise the Lord. And he'll say something else, praise the Lord. Say something else, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Where, where'd that come from? He trained himself to do that. Why? Gets that important in the Bible, that's why. You praise, the Bible said, uh, praise should be continually on your lips. Not just once in a while, continually, all the time. God, it, it focus, what you hear your mouth say focuses what you're thinking about and looking at. 
well, it's just vain repetition. It might be vain repetition when you first start doing it, but I'll tell you what will happen. It will happen on the inside of you just like the opposite does. You talk about what's wrong all the time, and you'll dole yourself up bad. But you praise the Lord often enough, and you'll start quickening. You'll start lightening up your spirit to where you can be quickened by the Holy Spirit because why? You're saying something that God told you to say, and you're doing something God told you to do, and it'll make a godly difference inside your spirit. And when your spirit comes alive, it'll affect the way you think. And when your thinking comes alive, it'll affect your health. Hallelujah. So, let's look at another verse here. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And, of course, Deuteronomy 30, 19, I said before you this day, well, let's read 30, 19. That's not the, that's not the one I'm get to, but I want to read it because it's the one that's familiar. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You can choose life or you can choose death. The thief, the devil, came but to kill, steal, and destroy. He would like you to choose death. God came... Jesus said in John 10, 10, that you have life and have it abundantly. God would have you pick life. But it's your choice. It's my choice. It's a human's choice. Now go to Deuteronomy 30, 15. And it says, uh, See, I have set before you this day life and good, death and and evil. So there's good and there's evil. Pick good. Do not pick evil. <clears throat> A newscast is all about evil. It's not the news. It is not Monday Night News or CBS News or NBC News or Fox News. It's Fox Bad News Network. They just don't put the bad on there, but that's all they talk about. It's, it's nightly bad news, not nightly news, nightly bad news. It's not morning news report. It's morning bad news report. It's, <laughs> and God said, my people should pick life. I set before you this day life and good. Death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, switch the Amplified Bible, your God, which I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his ordinances, then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land into which you go to possess. But if your mind and heart turn away, and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them. Where does that come from? The evil, the dark. I dic what other gods? Just about anything you can think of nowadays that keep people out of a meeting where they might hear the word of God. We were talking about that in Harlowton, Harlowton last night with some uh, other believers from another church in uh, talking about how easy it is nowadays for uh, people to be sidetracked from the truth that makes them free because of all the many pulls this world has got. Um, it's all designed, the world system is designed to keep people away from this light the devil can't handle this light. He can't handle praise. Praise stills the avenger. Is that Psalm 8? 
hold your place in Deuteronomy, and let's look at Psalm, I think it's Psalm 8. Jesus quoted this, and I want to read it, in what he was quoting, because he changed it when he's, and how many of you know if Jesus changes something, he can do that, because he's the word. It said he's in Psalm 8. Uh, maybe that's why I'm looking. Say that again. Yeah, thank you. Psalm 8, verse 2. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Thou shalt, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Still is old English for stop. The, the Amplified Bible says might silence the enemy and the avenger. Out of the mouths of babes and unweaned infants, you have established strength. Well, when Jesus quoted that, he said, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained praise. That's where the strength is. It's in the praise. And when you praise God, you stop the enemies of God in their tracks. That's why when Keith Butler was the, puts praise the Lord so often in a paragraph from the pulpit, I'm sure he does that in his everyday life, talking when he's talking to people. He's trained himself to continually praise the Lord like the Bible said to. Praise the Lord continually. <clears throat> Every time he says praise the Lord, is he, is he thinking about what happens when he says that? Probably not, but he knows what he's doing when he says that. He's doing that on purpose, and therefore, it stops the devil every time he says Every devil trying to shut him down is being stopped <clears throat> in ever, ever so many sentences. Is the, a devil gets stopped again and stopped again and stopped again. Well, <clears throat> I'd kind of sound kind of stupid talking like that all the time. Well, you know what? We need to quit being so concerned about what we look like to other people, and we need to start being a lot more concerned about whether we're doing any damage to hell or whether we're giving any place to heaven or not. That's what we ought to be concerned about. We're here because um, God needs us to do a job before we go be with him. And our job is to evangelize the earth and intercede intercessory prayer f that brings the blessing in in place of the curse. That's our job. We bless. We drive out the curse with the blessing and evangelize people. That's what we do. And if the devil <coughs> devil's trying to stop that and our getting praises of God on our tongue is going to give those devils that have been slowing things down a lot more trouble slowing things down. There's a revival coming in the United States of America, and it's not going to come because we keep doing the same thing the same way we've all. You keep doing the same thing the same way, expecting a different result. That's a definition of insanity. It is. That's a definition of insanity. Keep doing the same thing the same way, expecting a different result. But if you start doing something different because you find out that God said, hey, I want you doing this. If you start doing something different, expecting a different result, you know what's going to happen? A different result. Hallelujah. Praise. <clears throat> life and prosperity, in one translation said, uh, life and prosperity instead of death and disaster. I think that was a new living translation I was reading. Deuteronomy 30, 15, I set before you life and prosperity, death and disaster. How many of you want to pick disaster? And yet, disaster is everywhere, and the world's taught us to look at it, think about it, talk about it, chat it up with each other until we are disaster 
uh, disaster focused. I, I set before you this day life and prosperity or death and disaster. Pretty simple. Choose life and prosperity. Choose life. That's what God says. Set this before you, not choose life. Give us a hint. Pick right. Pick right. All right. Now, uh, I'd like to look at Psalm 104. Uh, now, let's look at Psalm chapter 3. Do it this way. Psalm chapter 3. And at the same time, when you find Psalm 3, I'd like to find Isaiah 41. I'll pick two places to look at this. This is not the only two places in the Bible. It's just two places for times. To save time. Isaiah 41. And Psalm 3. Okay, in Psalm 3, I'm going to read verse 7 and probably 8. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah, which means pause and meditate. Think about that. If you want to pause and meditate, that means mutter. Meditate means mutter. So you could mutter this to yourself from time to time. <laughs> that uh, save me, God. You have smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Would slapped him. Bam. <laughs> Thou hast broken the teeth of the... He, he didn't just slap them on the cheekbone. He knocked their teeth right out of their head. <laughs> now look, look at uh, Isaiah 42. 41, isn't it? What did I say? 41 and verse 15. Behold, I will make you... I'm reading the Amplified Bible. Behold, I will make you a new sharp threshing instrument which has teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills like chaff. Remind you, Mark 11, 23, speak to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Don't doubt in your heart that those things you say, well, you know, Mark 11, 23. Don't doubt in your heart, but believe those things you say, and you'll have whatever you say. Same thing. Our speaking now, in the King James Bible, it said, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. If you look in a cross-reference Bible, it will, it will give a, another rendering of the word that was translated teeth and its mouth. So I'm going to read it that way. Behold, I will make thee a sharp, a new sharp threshing instrument having a mouth. You shall thresh the mountain and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. How? With your mouth. You speak to the mountain. Be thou removed. You speak to these things that are evil. Be thou removed. You speak to disaster, be thou removed. You don't focus on it. You don't fill yourself up with it, and you don't talk about it. You talk to it. Be thou removed. That's our job on the planet. We're not here to extol the work of evil. 
We're here to extol and praise the name of the Lord Jesus and the word of Almighty God. That's what we do if we're doing what God told us to do. If we've been trained by God's enemy, we set aside the praise deal and we'll just look for every new bad thing that happened. Did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? Gossip's the same thing. You know, gossip in the, the um, so-called news networks are real similar. They will say anything that will get somebody to listen to their newscast, whether it's true or not. If it's anywhere near having a credible source, they're going to put it out there. And if they find out that source wasn't credible, they're not going to tell you about that. If they do, it'll be a blurb somewhere that you'll never see, never hear. And you know what? People are all the time, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And then when it doesn't happen, nobody ever remembers that because why? They've got five more things that are going to happen that probably won't happen. And it just keeps this cycle, just keeps going and going and going and going and going. What, what's going on? If we would praise God, follow the directions, be sensitive in our spirit, we'd know that either the, you know, some of this stuff is just sensationalism. It's, it's not, it's not coming from Almighty God. It can come from, it can come from right reasons. It can come from a right heart, but you know what? The voice of God doesn't make mistakes. No. There's, he, he's pure truth. The Spirit of God didn't make mistakes. How do we get so mixed up? Up here. The Spirit of God's here in the heart, in the spirit, in the real man. All the information we're getting from all the sources information come from are up here in the mind. And it's very, very noisy. It takes up a lot of attention. The attention, you're, the, you're paying attention is a, is a mental exercise. And the enemy of God has access to your mind and access to what your thought life the Spirit of God takes up residence in your spirit. There's no enemy down there. No enemy can get in there. A born-again spirit doesn't have anything in there but perfection and life. That's where our spiritual ears are at. You have five spiritual senses. You are a spirit. You're you, you have a soul that looks like your spirit, and you have a body that looks like your spirit and your soul. If you could see me, spirit, soul, and body, you'd just see three mics. Spirit, soul, and body are three, three anybody's that are born again. We are a spirit. We have a soul. And we live in a body. The enemy has access to our soul, but he does not have access to our spirit. Only Almighty God has access there. When you read the Word of God, it's food for your spirit. It's food for your faith. Faith is in your spirit. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It energizes your spirit. If faith cometh by hearing the Word of God, then where does the reciprocal of faith come from? The reciprocal of faith is fear. Fear cometh from hearing the Word of the world. What's coming over newscast? The Word of the world. What is it talking about? Bad news, scary stuff. What? To fill a believer up with fear. Well, what if this happens? What if this happens? What am I going to do if this happens? I better get this. I better take care of this. I better take care of this. I better take care of this. What is that? It's fear. Fear is not a good motivator. I've heard Christian people say this, a lie from hell. It's coming from a devil. A little fear is a good thing. 
That's not scriptural. It's not Bible, and it's not truth. Fear is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. You do not have to scare a little kid to keep them from stepping out into traffic. Inform them. Teach them. Don't scare them. Well, it's faster and it works. It's from hell is what it is, and you're teaching them how to be afraid. Don't do that. Good sense. Education does not have to, you don't have to train people by scaring them. You know, for years I've watched people train horses that way. And, and uh, you know, you can, get, you can get a horse you can ride and you can do a lot of things on them. But when they're terrified from you, they'll never be, they'll never be what they could have been if you'd have trained them to trust you instead. You can train a, you can train a horse. They're a fear animal. They're a, they're not a predator. They're not a predator. They're a prey animal that predators go after, and therefore they're 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 fear looking for a place to be afraid. And they have eyes. You you can tell animals that are not predators that are prey animals because their eyes are out here on the side of their head where they can see behind them. Why? Because they're going to run the first chance they get. They're getting away from something that can eat them, kill them and eat them. And here the predators have eyes on the, here in the front of their head, very focused, stretched right straight out the front. Human beings are predators, and the horses are prey animals. So how do you, can you train them by scaring them? Oh, yeah, just look right, look them right in the eye and come right at them and scare the wham out of them real easy. Are, it, is it, is it going to make the same connection as if you would um, get your eyes off of them and, and let them know that they can trust you, that, that you're not going to hurt them? You're going to meet, you mean business. You're not going to take any thing off of them, but they're given. They're going to have to give. When you ask them for something, they're going to have to do it, or it's not going to go. You're not taking the pressure off until they do, but when they, when, but when they do what you ask, you take the pressure off just like that, and after a bit, the horse will start saying, this guy's not so bad. He's got eyes, he's got eyes in the front of his head, but he's not so bad. <laughs> I kind of trust him a little bit. And then you do that again the next day, and they trust you a little bit more, and the next day you trust them a little bit more, and the next day you trust them a little bit more. When you start listening to the Spirit of God on the inside of you, He's going to train you like that. It's a still, small voice. He knows everything. He wants your undivided attention, and there's a lot of stuff out here scaring the wham out of you. Quit focusing on that. You can trust Him. He'll get you through anything out there. You don't need to protect yourself from anything. In fact, you should not be doing that. There are, I'm not saying that there aren't things God has you do to make good sense for your future, but don't trust that. Trust Him. It's a big difference. Well, I got this, you know, and if this happens, I've got this, and if this happens, I've got this. And I'm thinking, well, what, what if this happens? Well, then I've got this. Well, what if this happens? Well, I don't know. I never thought about that. <laughs> I'll tell you what you've got. You've got Almighty God, and He can do anything. There's not anything He can't see coming, and there's not anything He can't get you through and bless you through it and, and, and have you prosper right through the middle of it. That's who's on the inside of you, and that's who has a still, small voice in your spirit, and that's who you and I should be spending so much time praising. Because when we, when we say praise the Lord, we put our focus there. Take our focus off the world, where the world's coming at us with scary stuff. And instead of focusing on scary stuff, we see God in this place. I, I, I uh, want to wrap this up because I didn't read. Did I read Psalm? 
Yeah, I did. I read Psalm 3 and Isaiah 41. We have a threshing instrument, right? I read that. Threshing instrument, a mouth, teeth, and a mouth. God's going to, uh, in, in verse, in, in Psalm 3, 7, just summing this up, God said that he would smite my enemy upon the cheekbone and break the teeth of the ungodly. He's going to shut their mouths. Teeth, mouth, he's going to shut them up. Do you remember the parable that's coming at the end of the age? God is going to bind the tares and harvest the wheat. He's going to shut them up, and he's going to proclaim the gospel. We're going to have a revival, or it's going to be a rapture, and then there's some uh, outlaws going to be dealt with. So this is an exciting time, church. We're in that binding going on, and, and what God w wanted me to get across tonight, and I hope I have, is one of the huge keys, and I believe God's going to show us a couple other ones that are big like this all over the Bible, but, but the first one he wanted to address is praise. We have not been praising God near as much as we've been praising what's going wrong, and we've got to stop that. Got to stop it. Being informed is one thing. Having it abundant in your heart is wrong because you can't stop the abundance in your heart from coming out your mouth. You can't do that. It's James chapter 1. We could have went there tonight and looked at that. But here's the gist of it. You can't, you cannot stop what comes, pops up on your tongue when you're under pressure. You can control. You can't control your tongue. You can control what's in you in abundance. Out of the abundance of heart, when you get squeezed, it's going to fly off your tongue. If you weren't focused on evil, and you're not abundant with evil in your heart, when you get squeezed, there isn't anything evil coming out of there. Why? You've been praising God. You've been focused on what God said. You are full of the Lord and full of the Word, and you get squeezed, and the Bible of truth comes out of you. Promises of God, and praise the Lord about every four or five sentences. Praise the Lord. It's, just, it's in there because you do it all the time, and it's abundant. God wants his people armed, and praise is a weapon. It's a song about the praise is a weapon that brings the enemy down. It is. My praise is a weapon. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus for arming the body of Christ for such a time as this. I thank you that you've picked the human beings that look so frail to the enemy's to your enemies, but you picked us to keep them under our feet and showed us how to do it, and we thank you for the honor and the privilege of being a part of your end-time army in this earth. In Jesus' name, amen.